people in town call it the jungle, the ravine where some of the boys sleep when they first arrive. But they're not hobos. They're fellows who've run through their money and haven't got a job. And they've heard that if they get down to Delhi, Ontario, at the end of July, they can make a fortune. Norfolk County, Ontario, runs north from the shore of Lake Erie. In some parts of it, the soil is so sandy that farmers used to steer clear of it. No good for grain or pasture. But the qualities that made it unfit for ordinary farming made it ideal for one special plant, tobacco, the richest cash crop in Ontario. In the center of the area, the town of Dalhai, population 3,500. For 10 months of the year, a quiet, orderly, church-going town. Then, the end of July, the primers start drifting in. A lot of them naive greenhorns who've heard only that there's easy money if you can get placed on a farm. Employment office. Yes, ma'am. Some are experienced in tobacco and come in year after year from Quebec, yes, the southern states, the Maritimes. Others arrive without an inkling of what they're up against. These chaps are willing to work, but uh, they have no experience. Which one? Those two? These two here. Yeah, what kind of language do you speak? French language. French language. They speak good English. It's okay if somebody is willing to, to yeah. learn, you know, to try. So they're willing to work, that's what they're up yeah. for, and, uh, but they have no experience in tobacco. If, they, if they're willing to work, they can work. Because everybody has to learn, you know, one time. Just uh, sure. have to show them and not to pay them, them later on. Just before the harvest season begins, the atmosphere of Delhi is deceptively relaxed. On Saturday night, the Belgians compete in their national sport. It was Belgians 30 years ago who first took a chance on tobacco growing in these parts, and many have prospered mightily, though it's one of the chanciest crops in Canada. Sunday afternoon, down in the grove, the Hungarians have a picnic. The tobacco farmers around Delhi are almost all Belgian, Hungarian, German, or Polish in origin. In the towns, the newcomers just hang around waiting. Hundreds of new faces every day, just hanging around or having a last fling before the battle begins. The veterans tell stories of other years. The Jehovah's Witness, who primed tobacco all day and preached sermons every night. And always the stories about the tough-looking men who couldn't take it, who passed out the first day. For tobacco is Ontario's richest crop, but also its toughest. You plant tobacco by machine, you can cultivate it by machine, 
But come harvest time, you bend your back and get to it. For no machine has yet been devised to harvest tobacco. The difficulty is that you can't harvest the plant. You have to pick one leaf at a time when that leaf is ripe. The primers work six to a gang and move abreast down the rows to keep up with the boat. No more trees. Yeah. Raw tobacco is heavy stuff, with juicy stalks often as thick as a man's thumb. The moment one boat's loaded, another takes its place for the essence of the operation is speed. Once a ripe leaf has been picked, it can't be kept waiting. All day long, the boats keep feeding the table gang. Each day, the gang has to make up 1,250 sticks of tobacco. And the tires make 20,000 knots before sunset. The tobacco country is dotted with curing sheds, the kilns. And a kiln has to be filled with raw tobacco every day, whatever the weather. Then the kiln's closed up, and the rest is up to the cure man. Most of the cure men come up for the harvest from the American South. His job is to keep a regulated fire going in the kiln, which will raise the temperature gradually for five or six days while the green leaf turns golden. And if he makes a mistake, the farmers lost $1,500 worth of tobacco. The basic problem in the harvest is manpower. There was a time when men begged and fought for the chance to get a job priming tobacco. But the day of the migrant laborer in Canada is just about over. Where once the problem was too few jobs for too many hands, now it's where to find them and how to keep them. The best way to keep a gang happy, of course, is to set a good table. Imagine anything as as drastic as this that there's a there's eighty million dollars worth of tobacco sitting out there. That's farm value. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. That's the value to the farmer. And he's being forced to harvest that crop with help. Now this woman just phoned up and they're 186 short in yesterday's crop. She has one primer who passed out on him yesterday afternoon and one who quit, and two men remaining in the field to put the rest of that kill in. She can't come into town to get three more men because they, if they don't uh, get that kill full and fired up, it'll spoil. Employment in Canada is at its highest level in its history. And the men who in normal years, that is up until now, have been available down here for tobacco harvest, and the men who are good, are good in many jobs, not just in tobacco harvest. And these men are employed in the cities and on construction and various uh, work like that. They just haven't showed up here to apply for work. They used to be in Hamilton. They get an hour for lunch. A primer gets his meals and a place to sleep and $14 a day. To some, it's a fortune, but there are few tougher jobs. Oh, 
Some say once it starts, it's like getting on a treadmill and you can't stop. The first few days are the worst. The tires, fingers get blistered and raw. Wrists swell up and have to be bandaged. It's mainly women and girls who work on the table gangs. A few boys. But the work is so hard, they're paid as much as the primers in the field. The first few days are the hardest for the men, too. They say the trick is, once you bend over and get going, stay that way. Don't keep straightening up, because that's what gets you in the back. Come on, come on here, you big hunk of meat. The women's day is frantically busy. A farmer's wife has to take her turn on the table, and on top of that has to cook three huge meals a day for the field gangs. And the meals are no light matter. Some primers manage to do away with eight fried eggs for breakfast. It's not just the physical labor that's hard. Usually when harvest begins, they're into the hottest days of the year. It's not too bad if they're working in the open where they can get a breath of air. But down in the rows, it's murderous sometimes. The leaves choke off any sign of a breeze there might be, and it gets stifling. 100, 110, 120 degrees even down there in the sun. But they've got to keep going. When a man keels over in the field, it's usually because he's been drinking too much water. They develop a terrible thirst in the rows, but they say you've got to just drink in little sips, or first thing you know, you'll have cramps all over, or sick to your stomach. They don't blame a man who collapses, of course, but it means they've only got five men instead of six to fill the kiln for the day. Quite a few drop out during the first few days. Go back to wherever they came from, and aren't seen in the tobacco country again. But if they can stick it out the first week, they say you get used to it.
years you've been priming, Joe? Well, it's the second year this year. It's the second year? Yeah. How did you find it your first year? Well, it was very hard because I wasn't used to it, uh, you know. Uh, and why did you come priming tobacco? Well, it's because I want to make some, ex you know, some more money. <laughs> I can't save that much in a town, you know. I want to buy another car, a, a new, and maybe a new one, I don't know yet. How much do you think you'll go away with? Uh, pardon me, how do you mean? I mean, how much money can you earn in a season priming? Oh, around $500. How do you feel in the mornings when you get out in the fields in the wet? Oh, well, it's hard to say. Gee, I feel like quitting every day. <laughs> Where do you come from? I come from Western Salem, Forsyth County, North Carolina. How do you find working with the, such a mixed gang of people? Well, you know, uh, it's very amazing. Uh, I thought it would be very difficult when I came and uh, the night, especially the night I came in, and I couldn't understand any of the folks, or not many of them. And I thought, well, I, this is just going to be a very difficult to work, but I have found it very nicely. They have treated me very nice in every way and every respect. Even I think even they're more courteous to here than they are in my country. How many years have you been priming, Steve? Uh, about 12 years. Doesn't cause you any pain now, then? No, sir. I like a priming. Why? Oh, I get away from the job for a while. Gives you relaxing. You find it relaxing? Yes, sir. What do you like about priming the most? Oh, sand leaves. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel at the end of the day? Oh, I don't feel tired. Well, I like to go hunting after I finish. If I ever find a shotgun around. What time do you get up for Friday? Oh, we get up at 6 o'clock and get out the field about 6.30. Mm. Most gangs bed down in a barn. Occasionally, a couple of gangs get together for some entertainment, but they turn in early. Morning's not far away. The soil of Norfolk County is dead right for tobacco. The loose, sandy loam that absorbs heat so quickly in the daytime cools off just as fast every night. So when the primers hit the fields in the morning, they're bathed in mist and fingers get numb from cold dew that sits in the leaves. The finest morning is still so wet you have to wear slickers or rain capes. They call them rubbers. And then, as the sun gets higher in the sky, they sweat underneath. Uncomfortable for men, but the lucky combination of heat and cool and moisture is what the tobacco plant thrives on. When growing conditions are really good, the plant flourishes so exuberantly, it puts out shoots called suckers. And the suckers need to be nipped out by a special gang so that the life of the plant can flow completely into the leaf that is so profitable. But even in the best years, it's a chancy business. Besides the problem of getting enough hands to harvest it, there is the threat hanging over the farmer's head at harvest time. The broad tobacco leaf is particularly vulnerable to hail and frost. The weather makes or breaks them. Good tobacco going, Willie? Perfect. I don't think I've uh, had as good a year for tobacco growing as I have this year. There's Steve Coppridge has farmed here for 20 years. Labor is always a problem, Don. Oh, it's a big problem. Right yeah. Now. 
two boys down the road, uh, Lawrence and uh, Joe Kovanitz. Mm -hmm. They uh, hired a gang for suckering. They suckered for three quarters of a day, three, three o'clock afternoon. And uh, they went away, never come back again. Never asked for the money or anything. They just don't want to do the job. He says, I've got 47 <coughs> acres, it's got to be done today. I says, well, I says, I'm willing to go there this morning to start with you. He says, I asked him, I says, uh, what kind of field have you got? All the soccer in your field. He says, you got two, three soccer, the top only. The top only. Now, when we got to that field, this man wasn't right with me to tell me that last night, to tell me there was three soccer on top. Now, I can prove it to you. That field we were this morning, how was that field? Was soccer on top only or right to the bottom? Right to the bottom. What did he ask for that field? $26 an acre. I asked him for 45 to do it. He didn't want it. After I finished this school this morning, after the man jumped, the farmer came to me and asked me for $5 a vote when I asked for $3 a vote. And I asked him for a good price. He didn't want it. Now he wants to give $5 a vote. It's impossible. It's got to be more than that. The road, there are 650 feet, uh, 650 plants of, uh, of tobacco on each road. And it's the sucker from the top to the bottom, and it's not even been primed yet. And my man, so far, I didn't have, I didn't have any no complaint about those suck, about, about all the works I did so far. All the, all the clerks were was satisfied for the job I done so far. No complaint. Isn't that right, Mr. Did you no, have any no, I, no, I've never heard any complaint about your work, but I, I, uh, I'm not an authority on it, but I would uh, hesitate to believe that the. Uh, there are any farmers can afford to pay. No, I believe that. Five dollars a row for an average sized row to have well, a sucker. Well, the sucker, the sucker, they really bad on that field we were this morning, sir. And uh, if they could sell the suckers, I would say yes. But since there's no profit in suckering, in suckers themselves, uh, it depends on the tobacco they get off. Yeah. Uh, their crops. We don't blame nobody for the sucker this year. Most gangs nowadays take a fierce pride in their work. It used to be the harvest attracted quite a few petty crooks to prey on the industrious, and there were some rough evenings in Delhi. But nowadays, the men have one object. Work hard, make your money, get out. The trouble is right there. The sucker is too big. You'd say that both the uh, suckering crews and the farmers have problems with you. Yes. Yeah. Six weeks of it at least, and no such thing as a day off once it starts. Almost any storm during the harvest season is a cause for worry. A tobacco crop needs a tremendous amount of moisture. But while a storm may have been a blessing on one farm, on the same afternoon, just three quarters of a mile away, a neighbor may have been hailed out. Well, gentlemen, my experience in this bag of business, the hail is, is one of the most costly and destructive things that we ever had so far as human nature is, is considered in agriculture. It's a thing that you can start out with the hope of making becoming a wealthy man and, and, and end up in a pauper's grave. I lost between seven and eight thousand dollars in two minutes yesterday. If there had been no hail into this plant and these leaves like this were not broken, that's what you could call, call the cream of the crop. Had it in a plant to get you very choice of smoking tobacco, your cigar tobacco, and also 
your paper there. There's, there's no healing pro pro process for this. It's, it's just a teetotal loss. That is so far as the tobacco is concerned. This crop here is my seventh one yet. Seven times before this. You're a lucky. No, I couldn't. I couldn't consider that a tough, tough look because I'm not. I'm not wiped out. I'm not wiped out entirely. That is through the whole, but through the whole business, I just only had a partial loss. There. Do you get philosophical over these sorts of things? No, I don't. I try to take everything in my stride just as it come. I don't do actually do 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 too much worrying about the things I can't help. Like almost any farming operation, it's a gamble. They gamble that they will be able to get it all in before the frost takes it. They gamble that they will be able to get enough help. And some years, they lose the gamble. So the tobacco country is no place for weaklings. It has bred a people tough in mind as well as body, and always ready to take the gamble on next year. You work hard after a day's hard work. You sit down and you feel you've done something and you've, you've, you've earned the, the right to sit down and just relax and you felt you've done a good day's work. It's a good feeling. What are you going to do when the harvest is over? I'm going to go into a beauty parlor and stay all day and just let them muss me all up and relax. Do, I, do other farmers do my, that? Most of them after the harvest do just that. Relax for a day in the beauty parlor, do the nails, hair, and just relax. And the bologna was kind of, kind of moldy. So I, I worked, I worked that day there, and then I quit. I went up and told the farmer, I told him, I told him why I quit. I says, I, I'd like to work for you, but I says the meals ain't my satisfaction. I says I don't want no steaks or that, but I want decent meals when I'm working out there. I mean, you can quit. They can't force you to stay. What's it take to make a good tobacco worker? A good strong back. A good strong back. Just to keep at it? That's all. Just keep down, keep going. <laughs>